everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy Baseball Picks. I'm your host, my Roar31. I will be doing kind of a combo video today for the um, early slate at 1235 and the main slate, FanDuel's adding Detroit and Philly. So it's 6.05 there, it's 7.05 for DK as a four-game slate because the Yankees, uh, White Sox are now double hunter, so that game does not count, so. We'll get to that when we get to that. So apologize, this is coming out late. I've been trying to watch the weather. We've had a couple games um, postponed yesterday due to smoke conditions. I am in northeastern Pennsylvania where we've been in the red and the purple and in the maroon, which is like the worst one we've had in the high 300s, low 400s. It's just been terrible. So if any of you are dealing with this also, I feel for you. Um, but from a DFS perfect perspective, I just wanted to give a little bit more time to try to see if any games would be affected. So as we run through things, we'll uh, talk about that and I'll let you know kind of like what the risk is. I'm not a meteorologist, um, but I, you know, have done a little bit of research on this. So, uh, awesome night last night, uh, for FSI crew, uh, our GPP core had Burns and, and Gray as uh, the pitchers in it, and uh, we uh, the core had um, remnants of a Cincinnati uh, Arizona stack. Of course, we leave like four blank as you usually see on the videos here. So uh, multiple guys did very well. I took down some uh, GPPs with a two nineteen point five five score. So it's um. Pretty awesome. So let's try to ride that momentum into date for these two um, slates that are they were hard. It, it, they were hard builds, but we'll we'll get into that. So let's look at the first date here. So we have uh, the Dodgers and Cincinnati Reds in the Great American Small Park in Cincinnati. 73 degrees, wind blowing out 8 miles per hour. Clayton Kershaw and Graham Ashcraft. I think Kershaw is probably definitely the best um, pitcher on the slate here obviously uh very talented the wind is blowing out you do have some decent hitters here so could he have an off day could the reds do well yes but i think kershaw is going to be um probably the most high owned one ashcraft on the other side is definitely going to be a fade for me the dodgers have a six total here so they should definitely um go out there the lineup is out currently that's Freeman, J.D., Muncy, Peralta, Vargas, Chris Taylor, Outman, Barnes. So uh, there's a nice cheap catcher for you on DK at 2-2 because Barnes usually catches Kershaw. And then the Reds on their side, I definitely would play him in a leverage stack. I mean, Kershaw's human. Something could happen. And, you know, potentially with the wind blowing out and the decent temperatures and good hitting conditions, uh, you know, I definitely look. Ellie De La Cruz, if you haven't played DFS in a couple of days, is one of the top prospects in baseball and the highest prospects that's been up, been up in a while. Um, has had two phenomenal games, has hit home run, doubled, scored really well, and he's only 2.9. Like his price isn't rising fast enough on DK. So even against Kershaw, um, as one, this is pretty much a GPP slate. It's hard to say that there's cash games when you have such a small slate. Um of games, but in cash, I think Kershaw's your pitcher. But even against him, if you need a one off at shortstop, which is traditionally a horrible position to fill in, there's nobody in the Dodgers you want. Arizona doesn't have anybody, Washington doesn't have anybody. Um, Tampa Bay, I guess, potentially. Uh, Colorado, nobody I like Baltimore, nobody I like. Um, Adamas is back from Minnesota, so and Minnesota or not Minnesota, Milwaukee. Minnesota has a couple guys, but they're against Glass and Tampa Bay, which is a great matchup. So, I mean, by default, um, De La Cruz might be uh, a great shortstop, even against um, your pitcher. Arizona Diamondbacks and Washington Nationals have to watch this one for smoke. Uh, should be okay. Um, should be in the um, range where it's concerning to people with health conditions, but it shouldn't be um, severe. Uh we have Merrill Kelly against Josiah Gray. Kelly, I think, is definitely in play here. Probably my second favorite pitcher on the slate. Josiah Gray, I'm not interested at all. Arizona line is currently out. Um, Smith, Rivera, Carroll, Walker, Longoria, Rojas, McCarthy, Podomo, and uh, Herrera catching. There's another cheap catcher there for you for at 2-6. 
Um, I even like McCarthy down the bottom of his lineup. Like he does not a great hitter, but he steals a lot of bases. So not yesterday, but the previous two games, he's had two swipes apiece. So I'm uh, definitely going to be playing some Arizona. As you have been watching this video, like I stack Arizona and I had the, like an everyday stack and it was Arizona Cleveland. I'm starting to reevaluate that because Cleveland has just been such garbage recently and they usually don't pair up on slate. So I've been trying things like Arizona, Texas, which is too expensive. But the hard thing about Arizona is like finding somebody to match up with the shortstop position. Minnesota has been there, but they haven't been that great. They've been striking out a lot, a lot of injuries there. So um, I'm playing around with it and I'll let you know pretty soon who I come up with um, as, as a pairing, obviously Arizona and Cincinnati worked out well last night for me. So, but Arizona is definitely in play today as a primary stack or some fill-ins probably like the lefties more than the righties here. And then uh, Washington on the other side, uh, they're cheap. Uh, Merrill Kelly's not a, a untouchable pitcher here. But he's, there's a lot of righties, and he's usually pretty good against righties. So, um, again, if you need him as cheap fill-ins, that's fine, but I'm not super interested in Washington. Next up, we have Minnesota Twins and Tampa Bay. Rays, we have Ober and Glasnow. Both pitchers have been decent. So, I think they're both um, – Glasnow, I play in cash. Ober, I think, would be more GPP because there have been a little bit of struggles recently, and, and Tampa Bay is just can be such an elite offense. Um, you know, they've had some injuries and some – some guys out like low the outfield or the second baseman is on the uh, IL right now with back injury. So Josh low, the outfielder should move up to, into the order in his spot and it's a lefty uh, matchup. So that's um, pretty good there. So Ober, I think's in play glass. No, I like also Minnesota bats. Uh, I think just a leverage. I think glass. No, if you're coming off of Kershaw or, um, if you can't get up to him because it is kind of expensive, it does really help, especially on FanDuel. I'll get some bats in. So maybe some Minnesota players uh, there would be okay. And most of them are in like the three to four K range. They're pretty um, cheap for you. Not like they're two or three K, but they're not like five and six K to build a stack there. Rays are pretty expensive. You have Diaz Lee on you know, 5K. Wander Franco, like it's shortstop. I said it's a hard position, but at 5'8", like that's just going to make it so hard to uh, play Kershaw or some other um, bats that you want. So Tampa Bay is expensive. I might have a stack of them just to get some exposure, but definitely not a priority. That's why I have them in the GPP slot there. Next up, we have uh, Baltimore and Milwaukee. Uh, Bradish against Kyle and Ray. Not Colin Ray, who's a country singer, but Colin R E A, Rhea, however you pronounce that. Um, Kyle Bradish, uh, I think he might be okay here, nothing super special there. Same thing with Rhea, but I think I would side for, for Rhea potentially as the better pitcher here. There's $300 difference, so if you need to go dumpster diving, I think for an SP2, I think either one of these just flip a coin, whichever one uh, fills in better. Baltimore's just kind of not been as potent with um, some of the injuries that they've had, like Mullins on the IL just takes a, a huge bat out of that. Um, they brought up like Aaron Hicks, who has done a little bit better, but like he was abysmal with the Yankees. And you know, Frazier leading off has kind of reinvented his career. I think he came from Pittsburgh. And, and overall, there's always the potential here. And uh, Gunnar Henderson's been banged up also. So Baltimore always has potential to score a lot of run so i have them in gpp and i'm fine stacking them there but i think you know if you need one of these two pitchers uh Rhea might be a decent one and milwaukee again they're much better against right-handed hitting than left-handed hitting although they put up 10 runs yesterday so uh pretty amazing um and they're relatively cheap here especially like the guys in the bottom of the order if you need some fill-ins like if singleton plays first base he's like 2k on dk uh joey weimer had two home runs yesterday again like this guy's hitting for power and like if you look at like his box scores recently he's just on fire and he's only 2-2 so if you need a punt outfielder i think he's a great option for you and I, I think if you're trying to get like Kershaw on the Dodgers and you're just going to have to take some of these Milwaukee pieces because they're the cheapest pieces on the board and just uh, kind of fill them into your to your lineup or just take the cheapest guy that's starting at position and again you might be playing these 
lineups more as GPPs where you, you get all the stud bats and pitching that you want and then just fill them the rest with somebody that's actually starting. And if they get a hit, it's gravy for you. But if they get a zero, then, you know, a zero for a 2.2 K guy is the same as a zero for a 5k guy, but I'd rather get it on the 2k guy and then have a 5k guy in another spot go off then play like two you know medium range guys that both get zero so it's just a lot of averages for me uh final game here is uh, san francisco and colorado in colorado again there's rain it's yellow for the forecast um but it's been like that all week and they've played the games and there's been no issues so it's just like this like misty um you know summer uh precipitation that, that comes down maybe a delay but the game should be fine alex cobb and chase anderson i think alex cobb if you want to go for extreme gpp on a small slate here might be okay because colorado has struggled hitting at times and cobb's been up and down for the season so if you get him in up but um chase anderson i'd say no even though seaball who was a horrible horrible pitcher yesterday like no hit san francisco for the first four or five innings which was incredible so again anything can happen San Francisco has a 6.56 total here. So I think definitely look for San Francisco bats, um, but they're, they're reasonably priced. Like sometimes when I go to the course, they're like in the high five and six K range, the most expensive ones extract at five, three, like everybody else is pretty reasonable. But again, you have some pinch hit risk here just because they mix a match against you. So, but the Rockies did bring a couple left-handers out of the bullpen last night. So they might not be a bit available for today. So, um, all your lefties in the lineup might be facing righties in the bullpen. So that might work out pretty well for you. So keep that in mind in Colorado on the other side, I think, you know, it just makes a GPP stack against Cobb. Um, Washington, San Francisco is a decent bullpen and, and they're, you know, there's a lot of potential in this lineup, but it just doesn't ever seem to be put to, to get them together, especially in course the wind is blowing in here at eight miles per hour. So it's not like the wind's blowing out at 10, 15 miles per hour. And it's like an 80 degree day and sunny. So um, I think that helps the pitching a little bit. So I'll have some exposure to here, but I, you know, I, I think I'd rather take the Dodgers or maybe Cincinnati at great American small park with wind blowing out there and the temperature is a little bit hotter. So let's look at the um, lineup set I built for these and then we'll get you on your wave to the main slate so uh give me um i'm going with dodgers here i'm probably the ones i want to build around are, are freeman Betts, and martinez uh i went with some rockies here in in the first build because and i'm going to go with some lower price uh dodgers to make the stack work remember barnes at 2-2 for catcher um, probably going to go for Ray or Bradish at my SP2. Uh, but like I said, you can also throw Milwaukee guys in here. Or, you know, especially if you're trying to get up to like Muncie at third base, you, you're really just going to have to find like the cheapest guy starting at the, the any position and um, throw them in there. But like I said, remember Weimers for um, or Weismer for Milwaukee is like 2 2. So that's can fill in that outfield spot and, and get you a little bit more salary. So there are cheap guys to fill in here if you don't want to do like a primary stack and a secondary stack. If you just want to take a bunch of cheap one offs and, you know, have your Dodgers and have Kershaw and hopefully they score enough points to, if these guys, the rest of the guys hit zero in your lineup, then you'll be fine to cash. So I think that's how I'm going to approach that today. It's a little bit easier on FanDuel, but I'm not going with Dodgers. I'm going to go with um, Arizona and um, Milwaukee as my stacks. I like how they paired together. It worked out really well. I really liked the lineup. I thought it was a solid middle of the road one there where I got um, – some guys that uh, I really wanted and I was able to play Kershaw and it seemed pretty balanced for GPP. I'm going to take Kelly and glass is also um, in play potentially to Cobb. If you uh, want to go there and GPP also, and then um, I'm going to try the giants here. So Wade and um, go with um, giants and Arizona here. So Wade, Marte, JT Davis, Carol Peterson, and then shortstop, you might have to punt and take somebody cheap. Or, I mean, you could try Crawford there. You can try the Arizona guy, Perdomo. Um, and then in outfield, again, you'll just have to – you can probably take another Dodger there or Pavel Smith works uh, leading off. Or, like I said, um, you know, there was – 
Jake McCarthy hasn't been hitting great, but he has been stealing a lot of bases and generating a lot of um, points. So in play for your final field spot there too. And then for uh, FanDuel, give me Ray or Bradish here. If you want to go up to Keller Glass, I know it's fine, but I'm just going to kind of sacrifice pitcher because besides Kershaw, nobody really stands out on the slate. And then uh, it's going to give me a Dodger in San Francisco t- stack. So Freeman, Estrada, J.D. Martinez, Bat, and Wade are the ones that the higher price ones are paying up for. And then there's enough cheaper guys in the lineup to fill in to make the lineup work with a 4-4 stack for you. Okay, let's move on to the night slate. So first game we have this on FanDuel is probably the one that could potentially have the easiest chance of being smoked out. Because uh, the air quality is like 406 right now in Philly. It's a, they said on the morning news that it's the worst in the world. But hopefully it's supposed to improve throughout the course of the day. So uh, wind will be blowing in a lot of miles per hour. We have Tyle Horton not interested in. So um, it's a fade there. And Zach Wheeler should be definitely a, a really strong play against Philadelphia, against Detroit if this game plays. So uh, bat-wise, Phillies love the lefties. Um, Detroit, not interested in, only would be a leverage stack. Uh, Houston Astros and Toronto Blue Jays, Framer Valdez and Jose Barrios. Valdez has been very strong this year, although um, it's a lefty against an all-right-handed lineup for him. So I I think he'll still be fine, but I'm just a little bit, um, I like uh, Strider and Wheeler better. Uh, on FanDuel and definitely Strider better. Uh, I'd pay up for him over Valdez, but if you want to get a little bit different off the chalk Strider, then I think Valdez works very well for you. But dropping down to Barrios might not be that bad either because he's been very strong on right-handers, and all you have to really worry about is Alvarez and Tucker. If he gives up a couple runs to them, that's fine. If he strikes out the um, rest of these guys, although Houston's a low strikeout team and Barrios a low strikeout pitcher, so I don't see a ton of upside in him, but I think that if you want to make him your SP one to get the like bats in or something, again, you, this is a four game slate on DK, especially you're probably going to be approaching more as a GPP than a, than a cash one. And, um, you know, if Barrios helps you get where you're going, then I, I'm okay with that. Red Sox and Cleveland, you have Matt Dromery is gets called up. He's only 4k. He um, is a a journeyman pitcher. He's been around for a while. He's not like a high-touted prospect. So um, he's an average serviceable pitcher. So I wouldn't expect a ton out of him. But at 4K against a Cleveland team that doesn't strike out much but doesn't have a lot of potency in their lineup, he might be fine at 4K to just go out there and eat some innings. And if he scores like maybe 10 DK points and it gets you all the bats that you want and the SP1 that you want, Strider, then – I'm I'm fine with that in in cash or GPP. Savali on the other side, uh, I don't know if I really like this matchup here. He's a righty. Boston's left-handed heavy. They don't strike out much, have a lot of power from the left-handed side of the plate. So um, probably won't be playing a ton of him unless I'm multi-entering. So uh, bat-wise, Boston, I think my third favorite stack. Um, on DK, fourth favorite on FanDuel and Cleveland. I think there's some nice cheap fill ins here if you want to target the pitcher making his first start. Um, you know, I even like Jose Ramirez is only 5k now, where there's been times where he's been like in the 6k range, but you know, Bell at 2.6 uh hits uh lefties pretty well. You know, Zunino the catcher 2.6, so there's a lot of cheap fill ins here on Cleveland that you can use. Mets and Braves, you have Verlander and Strider. Like Verlander's been doing better, but Atlanta's just such a great offense that I just don't know how well he's going to do here. Strider has given up at least a home run in every four last four games, and he's given up at least two runs in the last four games. So the Mets and the Mets have struggled. They don't strike out a lot, but these lineups they've been putting out recently have actually increased strikeouts. Alonzo got hit by a pitch. He's going further evaluation on Wednesday, and I don't see him in the projected lineup. So, that, I mean, that helps the lineup also, even though it was righty on righty. So, I think Strider is definitely going to be your SP1 in cash and somebody to look forward to. Uh, Verlander against this Atlanta offense is just kind of scary, but um, 
you know, with all the pitching options on the slate, you, you've got like Veldas and uh, Barrios facing great offenses also. Uh, there's really not a ton of choices. So if you want to pay up for SP2 and you want to play um, Verlander, or if, I don't know if I'd play both of them in the same game here, I'd probably pick like Barrios or Valdez if I was paying up for two pitchers there but i think if you want to take a shot on verlander and you're fading strider in, in atlanta then that's that's fine um again there's not a ton to pick from on the slate he is a decent pitcher um but i think atlanta probably grades out as the second best stack on dk and uh probably third on FanDuel of philadelphia game plays the mets i think i'll have some exposure even though not, there's no alonso strider has it's just gonna be hard like to figure out who might give be the home run that um gets hit and then like who's going to score the two runs so i'd probably just take the lefties like nemo mcneil lindor who's been struggling way at home run a couple games ago batty if like maybe something like that maybe throw alvarez in as the catcher because he just seems to have decent power and really not a ton that i love there land aside of it also is one off i definitely like um you know maybe rosario albies like some of the lefties versus verlander but um, not probably going to play a full Atlanta stack either. Uh, Chicago in the New York Yankees is not on the slate, so don't play those guys. And then finally, we have the Cubs and the Angels. We have Drew Smiley and Reed Detmer. Drew Smiley, not interested in at all. So so not interested. He didn't even make the board. He should be right here. And it is a smaller plate, so I, slate. So, I mean, if you have to, I think maybe. Um, but I... I don't really see angels have a pretty decent total winds blown out here nine miles per hour Reed Detmer on the other side I'm not super excited about him but if you need an sp2 and don't want to trust the 4k guy then I think or want to get off leverage of the chalk 4k guy then I think Detmer's is fine for an sp2 I don't expect a ton for him but I think you know he can maybe get 15 to 18 dk points and be great um so the Cubs, I think, definitely make an intriguing GPP stack here, especially the righties against the uh, Detmer. Um, the lefty, like Honor, Swanson, have power. Happ and Suzuki really haven't shown power recently, but the potentials there. Gomes, I think you could lock in a catcher at 3K there. He's been hitting lefties really well this season. Mancini, if he's in the lineup, is cheap um, for a first baseman. Wisdom's just fallen way down the lineup and really fallen off. Like when he first came up, like – when the Cubs were in their right after their championship year, he just lose like massive power against left handed. But I just know what happened with him and, and morale came up was absolute fire and then just kind of faded. So uh, at four six, he's way overpriced. I wouldn't um, play him uh, in YOLO play. That's fine, but I'm not super interested there. Uh, and then the angels are my favorite stack on the slate here. Ward's been hitting probably, I think, in the last like six or seven games, had at least a hit. Otani lefty and lefty. I don't know if he's 6 1 for that. Um, probably leave him out of the stack. Trout's good. Rendon's been okay. Drury's okay. Adele should be back up. He's not on FanDuel, but on, maybe they will add him to the player pool. But on DK, he's only 2 5. He has been lighting it up in AAA since he got sent down. So he's definitely somebody to consider. Wallace as a catcher is fine. Nito, I'm not super excited, but if you need punch or stop and do a wraparound stack there, I'm fine with that. So let's look at the builds and I'll get you in the way for your Thursday. So like I said, taking Strider, give me um, SB2, um, Detmers or the Boston guy, probably. Um, catcher, I mean, or punt, or I'm going to play um, Wallace from to go with my angel stack here. First base, I'll leave that open for you if you want to take Bell to, for Cleveland. If you want to take Olsen as one-off, then if you get up to him, that's fine. But Drury, J-Rom, Rosario, Trout, and Adele, if he's starting here, batting fifth at 2-5 is great. Or Ward, and then your final outfield spot. If you want to take a Cleveland guy, if you want to take a one-off, if you want to take another um, you know, player from another team, then that's fine. If you can get up to Otani, then that's great, too. And then for um, FanDuel, taking Wheeler, Harper, and Schwarber for the lefties. And then I'll, if you want to take Stott or figure out who you want for second base, J. Ron Rosario and Quan, even lefty and lefty, I'm fine against the Boston um, rookie there. That's where I'm going. If for some reason um, 
Philadelphia doesn't play, then I'll probably just switch that to an Angels or Atlanta stack. Um, GPP, I'm going to take Valdez as my pitcher. And again, I'm going to take that Mars and Demoli as probably my SP2. And then I am, no, I won't take that Mars because I'm going with a Chicago White Sox or Chicago Cubs stack in Boston. So Gomes there, first base. Um, Duran from the Red Sox, or sorry, Cassis is a lefty. He's got some power. He's only 2 7, batting fifth, would fit in well there. Second base, you just have to figure out if you want to go like Horner, or if you want to take um, somebody from Boston. I don't really like Enrique Hernandez, but Valdez, I really like as a lefty. It has a lot of power too. He can kind of do a wraparound thing there, um, especially if Gomez doesn't play. Maybe take Reese McGuire as your uh, catcher. Uh, Deaver is a Swanson, Yoshida, a Chicago outfielder. Again, you can make a case for multiple ones of them. Hap, Suzuki, uh, Morel. I mean, one of the three there works. I'd, I'd probably go up with higher in the order just to either Hap or Suzuki just um, to sandwich between Swanson and Gomez, who's already in my stack. And then if you want to finish off with Duran or Verdugo as the outfielder, take two um, Chicago ones, however you want to do that. For GPP for FanDuel, give me Strider, give me Cassis there, Drury, Trout, Duran, Verdugo. That's who I'm building around. Um, you can finish it off with, you might have to punch shortstop, but you can finish off with Boston and uh, Angels players and, and make a, a decent stack there with a one-off probably at shortstop. So that's what I got for you for this Thursday. If you have any questions, put them in the chat below or hit me up at megaro 31 on Twitter. Uh, thank you for all your continued viewership as we continue to grow, um, as we try to get to 5,000 subscribers. Um, you know, we're almost halfway there which is exciting. We hope to do it by the end of the year and uh, we'll be rolling out some incentives um, to our viewers. So people who have subscribed to our channel. So keep tuned to that for more, some more details. And uh, so if these videos help you, then please help us back. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, share with your friends. Uh, it'll just help the YouTube universe get it out to more and more people so they can come enjoy um, the content that we're trying to provide here free of charge and help people out with DFS, MLB, and other sports. So um, if you want more information on FSI DFS, it's in the uh, details of the video. So you can uh, sign up, get into our Discord, get our full cores every single day uh, for all the slates that we do. Uh, we do sometimes multiple slates a day for, you know, today where we've got split slate, we're going to cover early, late, things like that. Um, we do all the showdowns, we do uh, the tiers, things like that, and offer like one-on-one -on -one coaching help. So appreciate you watching. Good luck in your contest. Um, if you're in the smoke zone, stay inside, stay safe, um, thinking about you. And uh, good luck in your contest. I'll see you next time.